and sit down. Right. <clears throat> Hello again. Colin here, Festa 67's workshop. Now I've been asked by quite a few people now how I make my door hinges. Okay. For when I've cut out a door on a model and we want to do a opening and closing door. Okay. So I'm going to show you. Now this one's already, I've already gone ahead and made me internal door frame, which is running along here. Okay. Now how I make that is out of a strip of styrene. So on a side that I haven't got a frame on, I would go along and glue that to the inside of the contours of the car. So you end up with a lip all the way around the door okay now I just so happen to have one just out of shot here which is the London taxi and if you can see it gives it something to close against so that's what you're after the next part is the easy part paper clips grab yourself a couple of bog standard clips simple office paper clips okay so we want two of them I've already got two for the next door I'm gonna do so I'm done with them now slap them out of the way get me cheap cheap cutters in and what we want to do is make door inch for said door okay first protocol is a bit of masking tape slap that over the door that you're going to be making the hinge for and tape the door in place see like that onto the model because you don't want it to move because you're making the hinge okay and this is the perfect stage for me to make this door hinge because this model is in so many different coats of primer now that yeah because it's had a lot added to it so get the hinge the hinge the door where you want it and i tend to tape it in so that it don't move like that all right now this is a suicide door that i'm putting on this one so the actual hinge is going to go at the back of the door it's going to open that way okay so the door's in place. That now gives me the inside of the vehicle. Let's lose the uh, bonnet, stop that flapping open. Now our door hinges are gonna go in these little styrene tubes that I've glued to the door. And they're just standard bits of styrene glued to the inside of the door, ready to go, okay? So I've lined my door up, I've drawn round where the frame would be and glued in me to styrene tubes. I've now got the actual hinge tube to put in, which is what this vertical line is just here. I'll get my pointy stick because the door's opening like so. So we grab our hinges just like this and what I'm interested in is finding the curve of the paper clip that clears the thickness of that door frame so grab your paper clip and just fold this piece out along this back edge like that because you don't need it now so you can get rid of that with your nips keep hold of it because you can make another inch out of it so that's what we're after is that piece okay now <clears throat> i tend to keep the longer part as the part that actually goes inside the door okay 
inside that little tube there is where that's going to live. All right. Just like that. So I can take that back out. And I can now start figuring out where that's going to go. Now I need to make a bend in it. So what you want to do is about... I could I'll get a measurement for it that might help you guys out a bit. I tend to do it by eye, but forget myself. So it's about five mil down, all right. And what we want to do is about five mil is bend this piece up straight against the edge of the pliers, like that. So you now have that shape, okay. You with me? That shape. If I put that on the cutting mat. Okay. We now want to bend this piece at a 90 degree angle like so. So you've now got a letter L like that. And that has become your door hinge. And that will clear the frame. As the hinge opens against it, it's going to come round the vehicle like that. Okay. And then that will go in the tube like so. And then get fixed into the car. All right, so that's what we want to do. Well, looking at that, on this particular one, because it's got the suicide doors, I'm also going to make one out of a skinny one, because I've just got a feeling that on my particular build, I might be able to get away with a thin one. So I'm going to do the same exact thing that I've just done. So we'll go pliers. We go for a bend out and then we go for a 90 degree bend down to make that shape. Okay, and that's your door hinge like that. See, and in my build, because I've got a suicide door, I don't need as much clearance. And as you can see, my smaller pieces lined up with the pencil line I've drawn so I'm happier now with that so I can attach my internal tube against that line and know that that door hinge is going to fit okay so for those of you that are not sure on how to make these that's what you do now your next half is going to be made the opposite way so I'll cut my smaller part of my paper clip for this one and shove that out of the way. Now I want to do the same shape but I've got to bend the rod the opposite way. So let's do the one that's going inside the door first and come up and then that is that and then go across the door hinge like so and instead of pulling this side towards you you want to push it away so that it ends up the complete mirror image of the one that's already on the cutting mat so you end up with that okay and then all you do is whatever tube you're putting them in just lay the tube next to it and you want to cut halfway along the, the paper clip so on this one it's going to be a cut rooney about there like so and then on that side is going to be about halfway along as well which is about there and you've now got that and then you add that 
to your model okay so that's what we're going to do now so I tend to put the top bit in first just like that and then go in with the bottom half like so put that in the tube like that and then we get the halves going in the frame now I don't normally do this when I'm filming so it's a bit difficult for me to actually see what I'm doing because it's quite a distance away from my lens but I might be able to get it there you go oh, really shall we try that again folks yeah don't be like Fester Edward strikes again I'm going to have to bring it towards me because I can't see what I'm doing. I do apologise. Let's try and get something that I can uh, see what I'm doing. Damn, I'm getting blind. The type of thing is that you're after. Alright. So let's try and get my hinges looking reasonable. drop in a bit of the old extra fin along that tube and start getting that to glue against what else I had the right pot of glue on it Burke along there like that note to self make a new bottle of extra fin Colin so let's try that one this is where I knock it over now That's all I want to do. And that's a door hinge in place. So let's shove that out of the way. And I'm going to put a clip on it. Because I need that piece of styrene to hold whilst the glue goes off. Alright. And that's all I'm doing. I'm holding that in place. But that's a door hinge in place now. Now once that's gone off... We'll then come back and we'll put the sprue glue in on the paper clip to actually get it to bond to the inside of that. Alright, so we'll do that when we come back. So I just need to put a clamp on that actually because that will work better than that clip because that's a bit, a bit useless. So let's put that in place instead. That didn't work. Should we go for another thing? Let's try a pig. There you go. Third time lucky. Yeah. Alright. Let that cure. And then we'll come back. We'll put the sprue glue in. See you in a minute. Alright. So we put the sprue glue in. Just to hold that hinge uh, tube in place. So shall we now do a, another demo for those of you that want to see how the door frames are done from start to finish because i've had a bit of question on that and all so let's just get that off of there for a minute <clears throat> and we'll get a door frame on the go so i'm just going to grab a bottle of super gloop and another glue holder saves having that there and this is the door frame uh, stage now because you've got to give the door something to shut against this is the other door now I'll cut that out of the car and as you can imagine 
it falls through. Yeah, because there's nothing for it to shut against. See? And you don't want that, do you? Because every time you shut the door on the model, it's, yeah. So we need to make what's known as a door shut, or door frame, however you want to call it. And I use super flexi, super bendy, styrene. And I've cut a random strip. Doesn't matter about uh, perfect straight lines, but yeah. Because you're going to sand the inside of it anyway to conform against the door. But I tend to start at the back and put an initial brush of super glue down there. Get my door frame against the first edge that I want it on. And then spin the model over and have a looky loo as to how it's looking. And we want to basically come along in a line like that. Okay. So we'll get some clips on it. And it is just little alligator clips that I have laying around and we just work our way around the door frame giving it a little, a little persuasionary press in certain areas just to start getting it to conform to the contours of the car because as you can see it's uh, it's got some hips on it as the old Mustang it's like a rather lovely shapely woman yeah so she's got hips, so you want to try and get that strip to conform to the voluptuous curves of said Mustang, like that. And then go for a nippage, and you can come along with your sanding stick at the end and neaten all of this up. But for the moment, that's one edge suitably done, like that. and that's all we're doing now I've got 50 shed loads of crocodile clips on it already so this will be done in stages so with the powers of video editing when I come back these clips will be gone that's going to be bone dry and then we'll do the front edge and the bottom edge let them dry and then we'll come back we'll do the top and we'll do that and then I'll make the next set of hinges so you get to see the pleasure of me doing the hinges again just in case you missed it the first time round all right so I'm gonna pause cup of tea dry edge come back and we'll do the rest of the door frame all right see you in a minute see so we've got them clips off now and as you can see that's pretty much gone a cold into play. So let's get the next bit of the framework on there. And it's going to be a bit that goes all the way from the roof pillar round to the front of the door sill there. Like that. So it's going to go to about there. So we're going to wick that off, like so, and then we're going to have another bit that comes along the seal. So let's slap on a bit of the old super glue, like so, and have us some of that. See, so now that I've got it. in place we can start going for a bit of a slidey kins oh, as to where the door's going to go which is going to be about there so let's get a clip in the middle and then we'll pretty much repeat the same process we did with the back part <clears throat> and try and get this to conform to the curve of the front of the motor like that and then we want one right up 
underneath the front of that wing like that see and that is what we're ending up with just make sure that we're actually on the part that we want to be on and press it up and that is that little bit so I think we can safely say that bit's done so let's figure out the length for that one which is going to be about there ish like that I think and the rule is a measure twice cut once I know but there is a method to why I've left an overing <clears throat> and that is so when we actually go to do the bottom bit we can cut it as near as damn it to there like that so you know I can see that now I'm doing my cut like that so we can drop a bit of the old super gloopy on there now and get this bottom part in place like that and that is beginning to give us a door frame See what I'm doing? I'm just forming the shape. Now I don't need that many clips on this one, but they're there, so we'll use them. Put them at each end and then space them out like that and that's now three sides done it just leaves me the roof and the door pillar to come round but I'm going to let that cure alright so again with the powers of editing when I come back them clips will be gone and we'll be ready to come along here and here and that will be another door frame done. Happy days. Alright, take them clips off now. Get rid of all of those. And that's three sides of the door framing and you can see how that's conformed to that contour and all the way along the rips there. So we are on a roll. Let's just pop that out of the way a minute and see what we can do with the old roofy pops. So we'll come along there thusly. I'm trying to remember how I've done the other one. Did I do it in one hit? No, I didn't. Of course I didn't. So, let's... Let's go with the old roof pillar, I think. Get that in place. So let's get a rough length. Which is going to be about there. Ish. Ish. Can have a little look then see what we got because again with these ones now because they're not really how can I say supportive 
I can just pop them in and, and get them reasonably in place and not necessarily have to worry too much because I'm going to be shaping them after the door's in place. So I kind of put them as near as damn it where I want them but not necessarily where I read too much about placement. So around about there because when I start sanding this back I will lose quite a bit of it so a single clip in the middle should suffice I reckon let's just get that a bit more oh, excuse me a bit more on the roof pillar So, there or thereabouts, you will conform, like that, so it's beginning to go, I just want to pull it away from that little notch if I can there you go that's what we was after just to get it in that pillar is all I want to do because we lose it when the door goes in place and the easiest way of doing that is grab your door put it in on the frame and then push the new bit of frame against the door like that see now I know when I take that door off that bit of frame's perfectly going to fit don't worry about any gaps or anything like that because you're going to fix them when you you put your gooage in and your, your, your filler see so we now know that that bit of frame is going to fit that door now don't do what I just did and twitch because when you do that it knocks it straight back out of place again so try not to do a fester and twitch a lot because it can can lead you to spend more time repairing stuff that you fit in than actually fitting it so touch of the old Edwards there but yeah like that like and that once that's sanded it'll be all right yeah so we can have ourselves some of that put a big old wadge in there now and I will clamp it try and get that glue to start biting. I'm not going to leave the clamp in place. I just want to put a little bit of pressure on it to get it to actually start biting on that roof post. It's not a lot of biting that's needed but it's just enough for it to need a little tickle under the old chin there just to get it to, to conform to that roof pillar so you're only giving it a little tickle that's all you're doing and I've got a little bit left there that can go in that cubby hole and get that in like so and then we've got the final strip then to go along the top of the door about there I reckon 
Now this bit is going to glue along the edge and then there's a tab that's going to stick on that bit. So I've got an overlap deliberately on this because I've got all the metal frame and ribbon to make for the other door yet. So it's a deliberate thing that I'm doing on it with this frame. So now I know I've got to put a 45 on each side. So let's drop that off. Drop that off. And slap it back in there. So what I'm doing. Just getting it to start conforming. Is all you want. Like that. So let's get a bit of a, a closed peg going to hold that in place. And that, me old chisels, is a door. Done. And I'm quite pleased with that. Put my little square in, just rest them all round. Because once this is gone off, you then go around with your old sanding stick and, and give it a bit of shapeage. So we got that, and uh, we can spin round to the old other side now and have just a quick looky loo just to see how our, our little door there opens like that. Yeah. Alright, isn't it? Yeah, suicide door. Bob's your uncle. Yeah. I'm happy with that. And like I say, what I tend to do then is once the door has gone off, I then get a bit of easy line and I'll put a dab of super glue here and a dab of super glue here and I stretch a bit of easy line right across here really tight and then when you go to uh, open your door all you do is let it go <laughs> your door pings shut so give it a bit of fault but that's as far as we can go at the moment let that frame go off and then we'll come back and we'll make our next set of door hinges for this so we'll, I'll show you how to shape the frame and the new hinges on this one are going to go one about there I'd use these panel grooves as support for the styrene tube and it'll sit just right against that edge and there all right and then we'll draw around the frame again to get the gub in sorted and I'll lose that line. So I've got a pause and we'll come back and we'll finish that. Alright, let's make that last last set of inches and see what we can come up with. Let's find me tube. You will come out. There you go. Right. Gee, so we've done that one. Under there. And as you can see, let's just go for a bit of a peely pots. Got ourselves a suicide door. Like that. So we've got the same through this side now. So if you remember rightly, let's just bring out that to rest the car against, just to make it easier for you guys to see. So we'll go through again what we've been up to with these hinges, just in case you, 
you didn't get it the first time round. <clears throat> right, <clears throat> we're going for a bend on that edge there. Okay. So we'll just pull that up like that and bring it to that shape. So if you can do that, yeah. And I'll wait until you've done one on the bench so you can uh, do it with us. So if you can get one like that and lay it on your cutting mat. And I'll show you again on this one. Pliers in the corner there. I'll flip that end up. I'll push it with your thumb. And you're opening it right out to that shape. Okay. Grab yourself your cutters and literally just where that curve's about to start is where you cut. Okay. Like that. You don't need that bit. I'll bung that actually back in my paper clip pop for the next set. And then the same with that one just before the curve starts about there like that. and then the long bit is what goes in the door and the short bit is what goes in the hinge so if it makes it easier I tend to flip mine like so just so that visually I remember and I've got a pair of needle noses and I worked mine out that I can put my needle nose about five mil from the end right the way up and grab the hinge and I pull push that towards me right over the edge of said pliers to give you that shape just bend that down a tad because I've gone a bit above what I wanted to and you'll end up with that shape so if you can do that I'll do the other one whilst you're doing yours same again little bendy box about there and go against the pliers to get that shape now you can adjust this and move it around because it's only a paper clip at the end of the day like that and that's the shape you're after yeah ready for the next bit then now this is going to be the top hinge so I put my pliers across like so okay now because I know that's going to be the top I want to bend this bit towards me with the loop in the pliers like so yeah bend like that you'll now end up with that shape rest it against your door and you've got yourself a door inch like that it's good isn't it see so that's your top one now your bottom one grip your pliers like you did before and instead of coming to you, you now need to push away from yourself like that and that now gives you a bottom hinge just like that okay and then I will grab my little bit of tube 
and then I need to trim these so that they both meet roughly in the middle of the tube so it's about halfway along and you just want to give it a cut like that all right I'm just going to bend mine up a tab more just to give it a bit more of a sharper bend you might have to do this on yours as well but you're after something like that okay then cut that one the same about halfway along like so so that when you put them in the tube you end up with a perfectly workable door hinge like that yeah cool another thing you can do is what I'm about to do is flatten down your tube before you glue it in on these and that can make your door hinge a bit tighter and stops the door actually wobbling when it opens and closes it makes these a bit of a resistance fit at first so don't worry my theory will work because as the glue or the extra fin bites the tube itself will conform to the shape of the door hinge okay and that's what you want that so I'm just going to untape my door on this side now before I put the hinge in because I'm going to sprue go it Sprue go it, he says. Sprue go it. Yeah. What I tend to do is now I've done that, is I'll get a bit of the old sprue go and I'll run it along the hinge before I shove it in the door. And it just gives a little bit of bite to the door hinge and uh, dare I say it just glues it in a little bit uh, let's get me spudger try not to knock everything off me bench like that okay. and then I'll do the same on the other side why I'm doing that left handed because I ain't left handed and my left hand as you can see is quite useless my right ain't much better if I'm honest like so like so and then put me tube in like that made give that an adjust and then that can be adhered into the door so we'll tape that back in and get that in place where she needs to be which is about there pop that in just like that see and that now has lined up like so and then I can give that a little nudge around and then we can put in some gloopy glue get that in place let's just clear that lot off because I'm getting myself in a in a bit of a fizz I go for a bit of gloop a bit of sprue goes straight away as well 
all the way along that seam. Just to get the first one to bite, like so. Yeah. And then because that is actually conforming really well, I can go in and do the second one. Try not to shake myself off screen, of course. There you go. That's now ready to dry. So that'll be left now to sit and dry, and you'll end up with exactly what I've got on this side, which is an opening and closing door. Just like that. That'd be days, and to keep it shut inside, I've got a bit of the old easy line in the tube that comes along and glues to the rear arch because the inside here is going to be the tubing for the roll cage so it's all going to be blended in all right and that is how you do door hinges so hopefully those of you that have asked me can now Go and get your saws, have a go, and I'll um, keep me posted on how you're getting on. Obviously with the um, Festa 67's workshop group, you can post photographs of your work up online in the group, um, create a folder of what you're doing, and send, send me some photos of you cutting your doors out and having a play and seeing how you get on with the hinges because I'll be interested to see how you all get on so until then bye bye for now